Oh my God, what a morning this has been. Oh, I'm so glad to be here with you guys. And you know, I, it started out with yesterday, I had uh, Suzanne and I live in Baby Kinta, a house right across the street. And we had a silent day and it was a beautiful day. And uh, I was out on the patio, well, I was out on the patio at one o'clock, at three o'clock, at five o'clock. And around 5.30, Suzanne comes out and the first words that were spoken after this day of silence was she comes out with a huge grin on her face. I am the light. <laughs> and it just kind of got better and better from there. Um, you know, for any of you that are on Facebook, I really invite you to sign up for Let's Wake Up Now. I posted this fabulous song that Carol Hicks from Australia posted. It's Patti LaBelle singing um, I Expect Miracles, and it's a gospel song. And I must have played it, oh, 10 times this morning. And in my mind, I was dancing, perhaps not in form, but indefinitely in my mind. And it just got me going with the topic for today. And Rockets for God definitely works. Um, it's really the prayer of your heart. Because I, I, I see my mind as kind of the cliff notes of A Course in Miracles. And for any that aren't, that don't have access to cliff notes, cliff notes is a um, thing I remember using in high school and college. Um, it gives you the shortened, condensed version of any long book. And it gives you, you know, what the book is about. And I really feel like my mind is the cliff note version of A Course in Miracles. Because it took me a long time to really get into The Course in Miracles because there were too many words. And I, I, I'm too ADHD and to really spend a lot of time reading words. So today is the prayer of your heart and this is going to be a speed up. For any of you that want to speed up in your awakening, you know, tune in to Beyond the Body because that's all I can really give you is what I've gone through and I'm starting to get consistently happy which is not a place that I've ever known myself to be. So um, the prayer of your heart is kind of, it's going to, I'm going to condense this with rules for decision. So if you have a prayer of your heart, and I want to talk a little bit about that, <clears throat> it, this is not a form-based desire. This really is something far greater than a form. Um, I, I'll give you, my, my short version of it is, I want the peace of God. I think that's what I originally started out with. This is not like, I want a, a great relationship, I want a better house, I want a better job, better, better, you know, whatever. It's not form-based. And in fact, if you have some desire that is form-based, that's going to keep the lid on your awakening. So if you can, even if you have those desires, if you can wake up every day with a much bigger commitment to your life. And so even just before you're feet hit the floor. I want the peace of God. You know, that is enough to really set your day up differently. And that's all rules for decision is, is how to set this up on a consistent basis. So, you know, really spend some time and, you know, there's many, 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 many non-form based commitments that you can make for your prayer of your heart. Um, I, mine has shifted over the, the years, but it did start out pretty simple. I want the peace of God. And that really came from reading um, Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, which were a lot of words also. I remember reading the book going, wow, it was a good book, but I'm not sure what he was trying to say. And so then I got the audio version, and I must have listened to that four or five times. And then I started to get, oh, this is, this is in this moment. What is it that I desire more than anything of the world? Which brings us <laughs> to the lesson that I want. There's two lessons um, that I have just lost. Um, there's nothing in this world I want. Um, this was a tough lesson for me, quite frankly. Um, initially, I thought, well, no, there's a lot that I want in the world. So how can I say I don't want anything of this world? Until everything form-based started to disappear 
And then I started realizing, well, I guess maybe there isn't anything in this world that I really want because all of it's getting taken away quite quickly. Um, and I can't find it now. Here it is. Okay, so lesson 128 is the world I see holds nothing that I want. And this was a really confusing lesson for me because I always wanted something. You know, I was always striving for something other than what I had. And so, you know, that this lesson didn't land very easily on me. The next lesson, 129, is beyond this world, there's a world I want. And this is where it takes you out of form. Because if you can see that there's something that you don't have in your mind right now, then this lesson will take you beyond form and beyond body. And I just need to say also, that this is, um, and I worked with, you know, Rethinking Sickness, which the next one starts June 1st, just to give it a plug, but we really started that program out with really getting firm with our prayers of the heart. Because particularly when you see something wrong with your body, with your sick or you don't like your thighs or you hate aging or whatever it is in form, um, the, the prayer of your heart is critical. Because the prayer of your heart is not, I want to heal. The prayer of your heart is, I want some different body. Um, because body is part of the world. It is form. So the prayer of your heart takes you beyond form. And it sets up your day to elevate your mind. And it's really to, to move into your Christ mind. Because Christ has nothing to do with form. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I should say at this point also, even wanting miracles is a tricky one. And this is, I need to say this just for myself because it kind of kept me trapped for a while. I want a miracle in body. I want a miracle in being healthy. I want a miracle in having a different shape. And that again is just a form-based desire that's going to keep you trapped in this very horizontal time-space continuum. So if you can come up with something that you desire, and I, I keep thinking of Eckhart Tolle sitting on the park bench. He only wanted the peace of God. That's all he wanted. And he was happy sitting on a park bench, you know, with no money, no food, but plenty of moments to just spend with God. And, you know, I, at some point in my healing process, I really got that if I had the peace of God above all else, it wouldn't matter what was going on in the rest of the world. I would have the peace of God. So it's kind of like um, it's the ultimate desire. Now, I must say, because it is a commitment to your day. Rules for decision is a commitment for your day. So when you start saying this on a regular basis, I want the peace of God today, what's going to happen, and commitments are like this, and any of you that have been married and divorced know this for sure, you set up this commitment, and then everything that's wrong with it starts surfacing. Oh, they snore. Oh, they pick their nose, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden your thoughts are focusing on what isn't in line with the commitment. Now here's the good news with A Course in Miracles. That's a good thing to happen because then you can start seeing what those judgments are that you're having on a regular basis. Oh, what is it about their snoring that bothers me? What is it about my form that's bothering me? I mean, whatever the thoughts that come up after you make these commitments, that's where you go. Um, the 30-day program, um, there, there was a woman today that, that talked about, um, and this is where the Rockets for God <laughs> comes in. Um, she was talking about, she had a 13-year-old son, and oh, he said something, and it really triggered her, and she got really angry, and, and she was screaming, and she ended up on her knees on the kitchen floor. And I, I just, I love that expression. Uh, and I invite you to join the 30 days because it's a safe place to express this stuff with mighty companions that are just going to support you in going back to what is your real commitment. And so um, she ended up on the floor on her knees and she was kind of going in and out of 
oh, all the guilt that came up and I shouldn't have gotten angry and all this. And I said, I wrote back to her and I said, you know, that expression, and I really encourage big expressions because it's got to come out. We're either expressing what's there or we're stuffing something. I mean, it's really, that's as simple as it can get. So when you set up the prayer of your heart, what happens is, uh, you know, the 13-year-old starts acting out and you get angry. Perfect. That's a perfect thing to happen because then you can express that anger, fall on your knees in the kitchen floor, you know, in tears or anger or whatever, and it's out. And then you can kind of start there. It's like you've, you've unstuffed that emotion and there's a whole process in the 30 days as far as, and I know I see Carolina in the group and she'll be posting some links to all this stuff. Um, but it's like once you express it, and this is what Spiri does, our little app for iPhone, and there's a Spiri uh, chat bot in Facebook. Um, but once you get the expression out, you can sit and ask for help from Holy Spirit or ho higher power or whatever you want to call it. It's, this is not a religious thing. Um, but ask for help to see it differently. And what's kept that expression in place? Like what's the grievance that showed up with her 13-year-old son that actually was her belief that she had from probably childhood somewhere that never got act actually healed at some point and it's just been stuffed over the years. And so these commitments are big because what they allow is for all this stuff to start surfacing. And I told her in that expression, because I love big expressions. I, <laughs> I've had some doozies. <laughs> in fact, there's people sitting in this room right now that have heard my expressions, have been the target of my expressions, and they know I have had some doozies. And the reality is as soon as I'm able to let it up, in a safe environment, you know, hopefully no one's taking it personally, and if they are, we deal with it here in community. But the, the reality is I needed to let it out. And um, so once it's out, then I have an opportunity to really sit with it, not get guilty about it, but go, okay, I just want the peace of God. So what's, what's the belief that held this anger, this rage, these, this grief in place? And then once I'm able to express it, I can see the belief. I can get that it's not a belief that I even believe in, but it's until I really allow myself to see it with Holy Spirit, I wouldn't know that. I can't know that. And that's this whole process of A Course in Miracles. Again, this is the cliff notes of A Course in Miracles. And it says on the front of the text, this is a, a, a self-study. It's not on this one, but on one of them it says, this is a course in self-study. The self-study is, what am I thinking? At any given moment, where am I judging something? And if I can just slow the thoughts down enough to grab one and go, okay, well, this isn't, help this isn't helpful, then I have a chance to start seeing all I am at any given moment in time is a thought. This Moment is Your Miracle is a book that David just put out. And it's, it's about this, how to really work with our minds by ourselves, living in the world, but basically going within to see that I have all these judgments. And until they're expressed in a safe environment, I'm going to be doomed to live a life, whatever those thoughts are about. For me, I lived with rage my whole life. And it's interesting, yesterday I had a, a woman that friended me from probably 35 years ago. She was in my life. Uh, Jennifer, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> and um, we had some pretty heavy moments together. And it was so interesting when she messaged me. I was so glad to hear from her. We had some nice chat and that was about it. But what, what I was left with were a series of thoughts. And these thoughts were, oh God, you know, I remember I was very angry at, the t at one point in time in, during our relationship. And I thought, okay, this is, 
this is not helpful. Let me see this differently. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. And this is all the Spiri app does, is really to allow yourself to have a, a piece of machinery, a little computer chatbot, to help take you through the layers of mind, the levels of mind. And if you've been watching Beyond the Body, Google Beyond the Body Levels of Mind so you can get what this is actually doing because there's a mechanism in place that this whole course, this whole book is about. This is not a book to study. This is a book to live in every moment if you possibly can. And you have a better chance of living in every mo moment if you're actually doing the lessons, one lesson a day, every day. Um, it gives you something to set your day up. And then the next layer is the prayer of your heart. Set up your day with what you want. I mean, at this moment, and again, my prayer of the heart has shifted a lot over the years. Right now it's Holy Spirit decide for God for me. And then I want to see a day filled with joy and laughter and delight and grace and, and miracles beyond my wildest imagination. And it's like, and you can make it up. I mean, it's whatever you want to have happen. And if you can give your gift yourself, it doesn't take long. A minute in the morning, just before you get up to go pee, say something to God. And that will be enough to get the rules for decision kind of established in this day full of moments. And then as you go, well, let me just read this. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, which I often do. ADHD, man, it's a fun thing. Um, the, this is in lesson 129. Beyond this world, there's a world I, I want. And this is what I'm talking about, setting up your day with something other than I want to make more money or I need a relationship or whatever the form-based idea is that you think that you need. You cannot stop with the idea the world is worthless. And this is where book study stops. And you can, you can spot a book study or a mile away on Facebook. It's like they'll quote these things. And it's like, well, my life doesn't look like that. I can say you cannot stop with the idea the world is worthless and there's nothing I want in it. But the reality is, in my mind, I want a lot. I want a lot of what I don't have or what I think I need. And those are thoughts. And if you can start just setting it up with something that is not form-based, you can actually live like the world is worthless. And it's not in the traditional sense of, of worthless. It's in my mind right now in this moment. All I want is the peace of God. And it doesn't matter what the world is doing because the world is just going to do whatever the world is going to do. I'm going to be in the middle of a foreclosure. Or I'm going to be on the kitchen floor on my knees and crying and screaming. I mean, it, and I just need to say right now, if any of you out there are right now sad or angry or upset in any way, great. You're a rocket for God because those expressions are very helpful. Once you get this out, I can't even begin to tell you because it's an experience. And until you have the experience, you can't explain it because it goes beyond words. It's like once that, exp that expression is had and you've owned, oh my God, I hate this planet and everybody in it, great. That sets you up for being a rocket for God. That sets you up for really, truly seeing the rules for decision working in your life. And that, the, the joy in that, I cannot even begin to express. Um, Suzanne and I were talking about it, and I, you know, I, I have, I've had good days for the past month and a half or so. Not just good days, really happy days. And it's not like there weren't things going on around me that, that weren't what I was wanting. I mean, I'm still trying to get a debit card down here from my bank in the U.S. And it's, I've had four phone calls with these beautiful people. And it's like every time I call them, I'm like, oh, good. I get to see where I'm not holding on to the peace of God. And then I dial the number to the bank. Well, guess what? 
the card didn't arrive. Can you try it again? You know, I mean, it's like, it, it's just a game in my mind. This moment is my miracle. Every single moment is my miracle. Yeah, that's that book again. And, you know, I just need to say about the book. Oh, man, I'm running out of time. Um, this moment is your miracle gives you actual exercises in there to really practice the experience of A Course in Miracles. And this is, you just don't, you know, I was reading this for 25 years, and I was miserable. And, and angry <laughs> and not very pleasant to be around. And the reality is once I started living it, it was a whole different, a whole different process. I cannot believe the time is flying. Okay, um, so anyway, prayer of your heart. Set your day up with it before your feet hit the floor, before you even think about brushing your teeth or peeing. Just say something to God about how you want your day to go. Um, Okay. Okay, I'm going to skip over to this other part. Boy, I tell you, half an hour goes very quickly. Um, because I do want to talk about the rules for decision. Because when I was studying A Course in Miracles, I actually had the damn thing printed out on my desk. And I'd read over it whenever I thought to read over it. And it just sounded like a bunch of words. And I couldn't make sense out of them. So really... Again, I, the speed up on this is get to the prayer of your heart. Really work with that today. Think about what it is that you want that's not form-based. Because if you're holding on to a form-based idea and a commitment to God, you're in a split desire. And this is going to keep you cycling into a negative thought system. Um, think about what kind of day you want and tell yourself there is a way in which this very day can happen just like that. I want the peace of God. Okay. See, I don't trust that I'm going to have the peace of God, but I say it with some degree of trust that this book holds something that I really want, and it's beyond my understanding. But if I say it, then I have a chance of changing the miserable way I've been feeling. <laughs> And it's, there's some hope in that that keeps me going. Today I will make no decisions by myself. And this is where I'm going to have four minutes to tell you how to do the rules for decision. This is where if you can just, I will make no decisions by myself. You know in those moments, and I, I'm really speaking to this dear sweet rocket for God that found herself on the, her knees in her kitchen this morning. It's like, you know, in the midst of it, after you've done expressing it, if you can just think, I will make no decisions by myself. Oh, yeah, what was the prayer of my heart? Oh, I want the peace of God. And I'm sitting here on my knees in tears, screaming like a mad woman. And all I want is the peace of God. Oh, I forgot. And it's like, and that's what it looks like sometimes. <laughs> it's like you're in the midst of an expression, and it's, they're oftentimes messy, they don't look good. I never looked good when I was expressing. It was ugly, very ugly. Um, and so it's like, but in that moment, if you can just think, oh, my commitment is to the peace of God. Holy Spirit, help me see this experience of being on my knees in the kitchen, screaming at my 13-year-old son differently. And then miracles start happening is all I can say. It's like, you know, it's, we're, pressure, we're all pressure cookers. And if you don't think we're pressure cookers, just, you know, read the front page of any newspaper. You know, killings, wars. <laughs> People are acting out and behaving quite badly. It's not the peace of God in the newspaper. But the reality is if you can just, every time you read something in the newspaper that triggers something, great. That's a setup for you rocketing to God. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. Help me see this differently. And there were days I would just, it would be, help me see this differently. How are we doing on time? <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a constant battle with my mind. Okay. It's like, it, I, 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 it, in my head, it feels like riding a wild horse because it's constantly pulling back and, you know, slow down, relax, slow down, relax, sit deeper in the saddle, sit down, pause. 
It's like, okay, I'm getting riled up about these killings. Okay, sit down. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. Really, all I want is the peace of God. That's the rules for decision right there. And just practice it over and over and over and over and over until you start having a consistent experience of the peace of God. And that's what happens. I'm telling you, it does. No one's more surprised than I am that this is true because I have not been known to be the peace of God. And, you know, this woman that knew me 35 years ago, yeah, she knew I wasn't the peace of God. And the reality was I'm by living these principles, and that's what we do here at the Living Miracles community, we're only living these principles. It's not a lot of fun. You get slammed on a regular basis, and then you come back to your commitment. I just want the peace of God. And then you, you, it's a restart. It's a restart for your mind. And you start clearing out some of these thoughts. And, oh, yeah. You know, I just... I, you know, I just want to thank everyone that's watching right now because if you've continued to watch this whole program, you're a rocket for God because there's some deep desire in you. Yes, Rich, I saw your arm go up. <laughs> there's other rocket. Oh, look at all. Yes to the rockets for God. <laughs> you know, we can do this. We can do this. We can have consistent peace and joy. And I'm talking because I have not lived my life with any consistent peace and joy. I've spent more of my life on my knees crying in the middle of my kitchen. And so I just say, you know, trust that another person went through this process. And it, it's not much fun, a lot. And all I can say, it works and it starts with the prayer of your heart. And so for today, I just, I, I'm getting the heads up here. So I just want to say today, I join you in the desire for the peace of God, no matter where you're finding yourself right now. And I, I just say, that's where it starts, is the setup for the day. And um, it, it, it will happen. And there will be a lot of thoughts to clear out and take the Holy Spirit. And that's okay. That's just part of the rules for decision. So for today, until next week, oh, thank you all for joining me in this m just mystical experience called awakening. It's not, it's not what I think, and it's exactly what I think. <laughs> so for there, mwah, I love you all so very much. <laughs> Bye, guys. It was just a tiny mad idea at which the son of